Hello everyone to a presentation on clinical assessment of hemodynamic instability. Now it is very important to know that before we attach advanced hemodynamic monitors we must understand whether the patient is actually in hemodynamic instability or not. If there is a delay attaching the most advanced hemodynamic monitor is not going to save the patient. So identifying the patient early and knowing how to identify is of critical importance. So most of the patients that are getting admitted to the ICU are getting admitted because of hemodynamic instability. So it is associated with high mortality as well as morbidity. Many decades of research have gone into finding the correct definition, de terminology of what exactly is shock or circulatory failure. However, more than the definition, what is more important is the early recognition. Whatever be the definition, we must understand and identify these patients early, otherwise we will not be able to treat them. Now, the first use of this term, shock, came in 1743 in an English translation of a French medical literature of a patient who died of gunshot injury. However, what is written is, there was still blood flowing in the major arteries. However, it was in the microcirculation or in the capillaries that the blood was in complete standstill which shows that it is actually the microcirculatory failure which is the major cause of shock. Now this is a painting of General Nelson who died in a battle and it is something which you can see very clearly is the general after being dead looks extremely pale especially in comparison if you look at the skin of the other people around him you can see that he is looking absolutely pale so which is a, one of the early and important factors showing there is a hemodynamic compromise now the first demonstration that lactate increase is associated with hemodynamic compromise was done by Scherer in the 1850s where he found out along with Virkow how hemodynamic compromise is associated with an increase in the lactate now circulatory failure the, the most important function of circulatory system is to provide nutrition and oxygen to the tissues. If that is not done, then we can term that there is a circulatory failure. Oxygen delivery is critically important in circulatory failure. Oxygen is taken up in the lungs by the RBCs. Now these RBCs transit through the circulation and finally reach the tissues where they give off this oxygen for the tissues. Now oxygen delivery is very very important, it is determined by the hemoglobin concentration, the cardiac output and the oxygen that is dissolved in the plasma. So whenever there is a circulatory failure, the body tries to compensate for it by three mechanisms. The first is by the heart which tries to pump more rapidly and with more cardiac output to improve the tissue perfusion. The tissue try to extract more oxygen and also the hemoglobin can increase with more RBCs you can give more oxygen at the tissue level however all these things have a limitation and also take their time once the compensatory mechanisms are no more applicable the patient goes into frank circulatory failure so once the patient gets decompensated like this we have two methods by which we can help that is either we give fluid or we give vasopressor however we will not go into the details of fluid and vasopressor, we will try to focus our attention on how to identify these patients who are in hemodynamic compromise, who are unable to compensate for the decreased oxygen that is reaching the tissues. So there are basically three windows that we have in our body for peripheral circulation assessment. The first is the brain, the second is the skin and finally we have the kidney. Coming to the brain, brain is one of the most early organs which is affected in circulatory compromise. The features that we find here are agitation, delirium, apathy. These things when happen signify that there is some kind of a hemodynamic compromise happening. And it has been seen in studies that 25% of the patients in septic shock do have a clear neurological manifestation. However, if we do more profound neurological testing, we can see that hemodynamic compromise is associated with almost 100% neurological manifestation. Now why does this thing happen? Why the brain gets affected? It gets affected because this autoregulation and the microcirculation is affected, the nitric oxide synthesis is affected and finally the inflammatory markers or the inflammation in the body also affects the functioning of the nerve. So a change in the mental 
state may not be a very specific and sensitive indicator of hemodynamic compromise. However, if you do find an acute change in the sensorium, do take into account that there must be some amount of hemodynamic compromise and you should look more details into the patient. Now, the most important and the most major problem that we have in the ICU is this. We always think that any patient who is becoming delirious is because of ICU delirium. However, it may not be the case all the time. There will be many times where the patient can actually develop hemodynamic compromise also. So one thing which you should keep in mind is that the ICU delirium doesn't happen over hours. It takes some days for this to happen. A patient who was good in the evening suddenly deteriorates in the night and becomes agitated. Always think there is some amount of hemodynamic compromise. Do not think that it is ICU delirium and leave. One of the major defense mechanisms of the body against hemodynamic compromise is to convert the circulation from non-vital organs and shunt them to the vital organ. So the non-vital organ being the skin gets affected very very early. So we need to see three main things in the skin to find out whether there is hemodynamic compromise. The first is the temperature, the second is the color and finally is the CRT or capillary refill time. So coming first to temperature, why is the temperature keeping affected? Skin is a major thermoregulatory organ and without any own compensatory mechanism to prevent the heat loss when there is perfusion impairment because the blood is getting shunted to the vital organs, it becomes cold and calm. A cold and calm skin is frequently associated with hemodynamic compromise as has been seen in various studies including this. And the next point is key do not try to correlate values of a particular cardiac output or blood pressure to a fixed amount of coldness that you are seeing in the body. You cannot correlate that and it has been proven in studies that you can quantify the hemodynamics based on the skin perfusion. However, a cold and calmy skin definitely warrants further assessment especially looking for the base deficit and lack. Now mottling is something which is common in the ICU. In 30% of the septic patients we find mottling. Now here we can see if the mottling is staying for a longer period of time, that is more than 6 hours it is affected with very high mortality. Now there is something called mottling score as was seen in this study. They used a mottling score around the knee and they found that as the score increased the mortality rates also increased indicating that if the patient is having more mottling there is an increased risk of bleeding. So mottling for longer duration and for larger area is associated with worse outcomes and definitely indicates hemodynamic compromise which should be treated as early as. The main mechanism involved over here is that there is impaired circulation, lack of autoregulation and nitric oxide mechanisms are Now mottling again is a major differential of DIC. Both look very very similar. However, as you can see here, if you see at the below part, you can see that once the circulation has improved, the mottling, the areas which were previously white turned red. This doesn't happen with the DIC. In DIC, the, as the top picture is there, even after improvement, the same lesions are going to stay. The middle area is not going to become reddish once the circulation has improved. Capillary refill time is a very fast and simple thing which can be done anywhere even in the pre-hospital set. It basically reflects the time that the blood circulation takes once you blanch the nail beds and you leave the time the blood takes to refill is called the capillary refilling time. Now there is a lot of confusion in the literature regarding what time we should take. Previously it was taken as two seconds then a lot of studies came which show that like this which showed that we can take at 3.5 seconds. Recently there are a lot of studies which are showing that we can take up to four to five seconds as has been seen in this particular study. So for rough calculation we can say that we can take around four to five seconds as a time for CRT to be called as norm. Now there is a lot of inter variation which is seen over here. So the utility of capillary refill time is that it's an extremely good screening tool. You can very quickly assess whether the patient is having a problem or not. If the patient is actually having a problem then I look more deeper and try to establish a hemodynamic compromise and it is cheap it can be done early so it, there are not not any risk factors or problems associated with doing it so even if there is an interobserver variety it doesn't really matter because it doesn't cost me anything for doing it at the bedside or even at a pre-hospital setting an early sign of impaired kidney perfusion is decreased urine output and 
the traditional value of 0.5 ml per kg per hour is something which has been established as a marker of he good hemodynamic resuscitation improvement and a marker for acute kidney injury however this marker is not very much established in the literature we have not really seen studies which have established that when we achieve this urine output there is good outcome or it is associated with renal injury or there is a chance of hemodynamic compromise acute kidney injury in the initial phases is actually associated with polyuria so if you look at this particular study which was done in doctors who are working in the icu it is can be seen here that doctors here were classified as oliguric at, at risk of kidney injury so almost one out of every four doctors was classified as at risk of kidney injury however none of these doctors developed any kind of complications later on however if you do find decrease in urine output take it as an alarming sign treat it always consider that there is a component and there is a chance of hemodynamic compromise here so look for more factors which can see or which can establish whether there is an actual hemodynamic compromise or not a decrease in the output is an alarming sign do not neglect it and always investigate as to what could be the possible cause of it keeping in mind that hemodynamic compromise is probably one of the most important causes over here and this table basically is summarizing the what we have told till now that is the window of brain where you look for acute neurological changes in skin where you look for the temperature the color and the capillary refill time and finally the kidney the urine output out of this the most important i would say is the brain followed by the skin if you find a altered patient with cold and kami there is a very very high risk that the patient is hemodynamically compromised do not neglect such patients and always listen feel and look always be at the bedside clinically involved with the patient trying to find out if there is a new neurological change or if there is a change in the skin color or temperature that could be a sign of hemodynamic compromise but also keep in mind that there is an important factor that is the relevant history of the patient that must be also in the mind and the drugs the patient is taking the heart rate the blood pressure the lactate that can help you in diagnosing a hemodynamic compromise so the take home message is that patients who have changes in the three windows that we have told do have a worse outcome now these three windows are not really sensitive and specific to diagnose a hemodynamic compromise however if you are seeing something like this do not neglect it because these are non expensive things which are very easy to be done you don't need any advanced training or you do not need any advanced monitor for this so whenever you find any abnormality in this always investigate further and if you are not convinced that it is a uh, cause is hemodynamic compromise always you can do other tests uh, more advanced monitoring look at the base excess look at the lactates look at the other parameters which can help you in indicating that there could be a hemodynamic compromise and if you are still not convinced then at least follow up the patients it is very important to follow up what is happening to them so if you find a patient who had developed a sudden delirium do keep in mind that okay you diagnosed it is icu delirium but always keep in mind that this could be also hemodynamic compromise so if this patient develops a cold kami skin or develops a tachycardia immediately intervene because if any delay is going to worsen the outcome so always follow these simple windows technique so that you can early identify the hemodynamic compromise and do not miss the early hour for intervention and if you are really finding our videos helpful then do give us a like because it really encourages us thank you for your patience